Yeah, so uh, as, as I was introduced, Kaisen Abkoyens, and I'm head of the Cybersecurity Lab. And I'm really a computer security guy uh, working with uh, access control, but we've started up uh, some projects looking at the maritime security and the security of sh uh, ships. And many of the things that we've seen this morning, the IT and the OT and how they overlap, uh, are really overlapping in ships. And so that is part of the message that I would like to uh, convey to you here today. Okay? If we look at piracy and pirates uh, and the way that uh, ships have been involved in, in criminality over time, we perhaps started out with kind of like, yeah, I come from Denmark, so Vikings is a natural place to start. Uh, but people coming in from ships to, uh, to sea, so it was more a, a mean of trans transportation, so from sea to land. And then the golden age of pirates, um, the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean and, and similar kind of uh, characters is the, uh, the second uh, age or version 2.0 off of piracy, uh, where it was from ship to ship. And now we have, with the uh, more modern times, the Somali pirates, is there a, no, not really. Um, the uh, Somali or other places, there's uh, right now not so much going on around Somalia. A lot of it is more uh, around Nigeria uh, and, uh, and also uh, some of the north coast of, uh, of uh, South America. Uh, but they're coming from land and going to sea and, and try to, uh, to get to ships. Uh, still, all of this, the first three uh, versions have been very physical in many ways. Uh, and what we're seeing now is that we can try to divert uh, uh, ships, try to uh, divert information, and try to attack ships uh, from everywhere, basically, through uh, cyber means. And so that is the, uh, that's the, uh, the version 4.0. Aha, I found it. Um, whoops. Um, so I'll give you a few examples of, of how this can go wrong. Um, and the first one is that the, uh, the port of Antwerp back in 2011 got hacked uh, by some drug cartels from uh, South America. And for two years, they basically uh, were in the system and they were able to go and make sure that their containers got uh, in there, undetected, got uh, loaded in some cases onto trucks. And so they could transport uh, drugs and, and guns through uh, Antwerp uh, for, for two years without, before they were actually noticed. That reads customs, not customers. I'm sorry, <laughs> spelling mistake. <laughs> uh, customs and Border Protection in Australia was hacked in 2012, and they weren't able to go in and do as much as they did in Antwerp, but what they were able to do was to look at what the customs officers were interested in. So they could make sure that whatever containers that the customs uh, uh, officers had profiled and decided they wanted to go and look for these, um, they, uh, they did not contain any contraband, uh, and so, or maybe a sacrificial contraband, uh, but not the, the real important stuff. Uh, there was a case where uh, a US Navy warship was grounded on a coral reef back in the Philippines in 2013, and there, ECDIS is a word that will reappear. That's the, uh, the electronic chart display and information system, so basically the electronic uh, maps that the captains use for navigation. Uh, that system was identified as the problem in the official report. Uh, they then had, just like we heard this morning, they had somebody look over the technical uh, system and found no flaws in it. So later on, people have started suspecting that possibly they got a a malicious map update so that the coral reef wasn't plotted on the map that they were using when they were sailing around. Um, there was a Danish company, Cyberkeel, that has uh, done a, uh, an examination of uh, servers on ships, and they looked at the Microsoft servers and found that uh, 37 of them were not patched. And we heard this morning, sometimes that may not be a, an issue because uh, maybe it's more important to have things running than to, uh, to make sure that uh, things are completely up to date. But remember that ships, they do actually uh, come to port on a regular basis. So there are windows of opportunity to patch. It's not like a nuclear power plant where you basically need the services 24 seven. Ships you can update if you'd like, uh, at least some of them. Um, so uh, the fact that 37% of them were not updated is 
a worrying uh, thing to, to look at. Uh, one place where the digital world and the cyber world meet very closely was the, uh, the second from last example here, where cargo ships lost navigation system. There was a ship sailing from Cyprus to uh, Djibouti. And on the way, the captain, they, they lost navigational control for 10 hours. And in that time window, pirates found them and boarded them because they basically could not do very much without the controls of the system. Um, so that's also how we can start if we can manipulate uh, the ships, the control ships, different control systems on the ships that can actually be uh, used in a physical attack. Um, and then there is uh, GPS spoofing. There was an uh, incident back in uh, 2017 in the Black Sea where uh, several rep ships reported that they were no longer in the Black Sea or the, uh, the GPS uh, system, but told them they were actually uh, in an airport that was 30 kilometers inland from, uh, from where the Red Sea is. So, uh, so you can do things like that with, uh, with messing with the system. And when we look at a, a ship system, there's a whole lot of systems that play together. It's, uh, uh, just like the power plants that we've seen, we have uh, all the navigational systems. We have the communication that the captain has to go communicate on land uh, with people there. Uh, we have the control of the system, uh, system steering and propulsion, uh, the engine. Uh, and there are a lot of the big engine companies, if you look into the airplane or aeronautical industry, uh, the Rolls-Royce, the plane uh, motor manufacturers, they no longer sell motors. What they sell is thrust. They sell hours of flight. And of course, uh, the service model is kind of like a, a constant revenue model for, for these companies. So that's what they're looking to do also uh, with ships, which means that all the, uh, the big uh, motor, uh, ships motor companies are looking at uh, telemetrics from these uh, ship engines, getting that information back so that they can analyze it and tell the, uh, the shipping companies when to renew or when to put the ship into dock and have uh, service the, uh, the motors of the ship. It's a whole lot of, there's actually a vessel data recorder, which is, or a voyage data recorder, uh, which is uh, similar to what the, uh, the black box and the planes are. Uh, there's a whole lot of systems, le uh, ballast systems, to make sure that the ship is as stable as possible when it's uh, moving through the, uh, the ocean. Uh, because if you can destabilize a ship, you can shift the cargo, and that could lead to a uh, fatality, it lead to the ship uh, uh, capsizing. Um, I think those, those were the more important things, and it, it, the main reason for bringing this up is to have, uh, to get you kind of like a, a notion of all the complexities that are there. The fact that I also have things like uh, entertainment system in here, because this is a cargo ship, and it, this is important. Uh, or, well, piracy is important because 90% of products are being transported by sea at some stage in, in the logistics chain. Uh, so cargo ships are important, but we also have uh, passenger ships, and so they, these need to be entertained. Of course, the crew and cargo ships need to be entertained, so there is an entertainment system on board, and there's a whole lot of other kind of like more traditional IT on board. So the IT and the OT really meet in, in ships, maybe more than in power plants. So when we look at these uh, systems, we have all these different people. We have the, uh, all the, whoops, all the, uh, the sensors out here, uh, navigation sensors of different kinds, uh, the uh, power plant sensors, uh, different safety sensors, the stability of the ship, uh, shifting of the cargo, different form of uh, management information, and, all, uh, and uh, also the access control system. These two last things are more for, for passenger ships. Uh, and all of this has a link into a uh, command and control system that feeds information back into the logistics chain. Because ships are just part of a chain. So people before them have to make sure that things went well with the ship, and things that are about to receive things from the ship are, need to know where the ship is and, and what their, the state of their cargo is. Okay. So, so there is a whole lot of people on shore that needs to know what's happened offshore. And then we have all these different people on the ship, the passengers, the stewards, and, and the people that are there to make sure that the passenger feel well, the engine and the engineers, and then the, uh, the deckhands and, and also the navigational officers. So there's a whole lot of different classes of people who need to have access to these different systems, which also makes it quite complicated to make sure that we get everything right. Um, 
basically, this is kind of like the, the kinds of systems that you can mess with if you want to mess with a ship. Okay? So there is the communication system, the satellite communication. This is uh, not, uh, generally not uh, encrypted. Uh, we have uh, VHF radio, again, that is generally not encrypted. And of course, these voice over IP and the, the VLANs that we can have on board the ship may be encrypted or may not be encrypted. So if we want to communicate with the ship and we want to have secure communication, then we need to, uh, to actually make sure that we put those uh, protocols on top of the insecure protocols that are used underneath it. So I have a civilian license for marine-based uh, VHF radio. Uh, and in that process, I had to sign a document that whatever I heard on the radio, I would not convey to anybody else. That's how security works in the uh, in maritime to a large degree, that people sign on a form that, yes, they will not relay this information on. Okay. Then we have the navigation systems, the global uh, satellite systems. I have this uh, chart database that I talked about before. The automated information system, uh, identification system is where ships tell each other uh, who they are, where they are, what's their heading, and so, um, and also buoys and, and uh, lighthouses may send out this information to help people navigate uh, in, in, uh, at sea. Problem with the AIS system is this is a very old system. Nobody thought about security when that was first installed, so there are no security protocols. Anybody can spoof AIS information. Okay? So imagine that you have here in the port in Riga a, a big cargo ship coming in, and then suddenly there is a whole flotilla of other ships because an attacker just creates phantom boats, AIS signals. Uh, what would the, not just the captain on that ship, because if he looks out his window, he will see there are no ships there. So maybe he can override. But if he's uh, not present or, or not awake or it's very, very foggy, then perhaps uh, the automated systems will react or he will react uh, in the same way as the automated systems will be to try to avoid those a flotilla and may actually uh, go on ground. Similar with the navigation system, if you can dislocate the ship in, in accordance to where you think it is, then uh, it may actually run aground. And there has been a number of studies where they've tried to, to play with that. Propulsion and power control, we saw that if you can stop the ship in the waters, then the pirates have a much easier way of getting on board. Uh, the access control systems on board the ship, uh, the CCTVs that may be there, uh, the uh, systems that make sure there's, a, like the dead man switch on a train, there is a similar thing on, on the bridge control. Uh, there are cargo management system, uh, management of, of the ship's engines, and also the, uh, the uh, certificate stores that are located on the ship to make sure that all this equipment works together. And all the passengers and the crew networks, and of course all the core information uh, uh, infrastructure that may be both, both wired and, and unwired or wireless. Uh, which is something that we can try to attack the ship. And of course, what kind of attacks we can do depend on where we are in, collabor in, in uh, comparison uh, with the ship. So if we look at the, uh, the major uh, target areas, actually, sorry, um, oops, that was not backwards. I'm learning this remote control slowly. I promised you that I would get back to the uh, ECDIS system. And uh, one of the reasons why this ECDIS system is, is quite important is that uh, very often it's just a computer. Okay? I mean, it's a system that can show a map of the world. So uh, this was installed when the ship was new. So whatever operating system was uh, popular at the time is probably what this ECDIS system will be running. And so uh, CyberKeel found, uh, in, in their study, found uh, Windows XP in, in a lot of them. Uh, that has actually also been a case for the American uh, uh, Navy that they were in uh, 2017, did they start moving out uh, some of the old uh, Windows XP machines. They had an extended service contract with Microsoft to make sure that it got maintained until then. But uh, three years after the official ending of service on Windows XP, the US Navy was still running uh, Windows XP. Uh, of course, again, on the service contract, so it was not as uh, irresponsible as it may sound. Uh, but in other systems, uh, other investigations have found Windows NT machines and a whole lot of other very old operating systems in these ECTIS uh, charts. Okay? So the ECTIS chart is an IT system. And um, 
but it's also uh, linked in with a lot of the OT systems on the ship. So when you heard the first presentation this morning, you got the, uh, the notion that maybe if you could separate your IT network and your OT network, that was a good bit of the way. But in this case, we need to get map updates because the world changes. There are shipwrecks that uh, become maritime hazards that we need to have plotted in our maps. Things shift, uh, so therefore we need to have these updates. And these map updates, if we have a completely disconnected network, we cannot make them. So very often, the uh, updates are sent to the captain, possibly in an email, which means that uh, hackers can send fake email to the captain saying, oh, we have a map update for you, please install this in your machine. And that could contain a whole lot of other stuff that you might want to have installed in the Ectus system there. Uh, the Ectus system is also connected to the, uh, to the engine because it needs to know how fast the ship is going. It needs to have uh, the, uh, the heading of the ship. So there are kind of like inertial uh, sensors in the ship that says something about whether the heading is going in, in uh, what heading the ship is following, not just the GPS, but also the, uh, for, for dead reckoning. Uh, so it is really linked up to a lot of places where uh, it brings a lot of stuff together. So from a hacker's point of view, this is a very, very interesting uh, kind of, of system to, to get at. And the fact that it's being updated uh, very frequently is something, or uh, frequently, is something that uh, makes it kind of like less sensitized. Okay? And that brings us back to another kind of, of uh, threat that is to ships, that crew are often hired for a short period of time to serve on the same vessel. If you get to, uh, to sail a, or fly a, a, a certain uh, commercial airliner, then um, you get certified for that plane. Uh, and of course, to some degree, you do the same for ships. Uh, but it's not uh, nearly as methodical as it is in aviation. And so the crews on these ships, they change around uh, quite a bit. But for uh, airlines, planes are typically very much the same. Whereas ships are being updated, if there's something breaks and they come into port, they get replaced, that unit gets replaced with whatever is the closest fit uh, in the repair shop in that port because the ship needs to move on. Uh, which means that uh, although they may have class uh, definitions of ships, ships uh, uh, tend to variate over time. And, and uh, what looked like uh, very much the same product when it came off the, uh, the shipyard over time, because this time is 20, 30, 40 years, uh, they variate. And so uh, people, the crew on board, are not necessarily trained to the particular infrastructure that they're dealing with and they may not be the most aware people. One of the threats that I didn't put up uh, on there is a story that I've heard that I haven't been able to corroborate, uh, but I'll bring it on uh, anyway because it kind of like illustrates this point. Um, and the story is that a um, ship had this Ectus system with a USB uh, map update facility. So you'd insert a USB stick with the map update and it would have an autoload facility, so uh, as soon as you put in the uh, USB stick, it would the, uh, upload the uh, map database of that Ectis system. One late night, there was somebody uh, on the bridge. He was in, uh, uh, on guard on the bridge, uh, and he noticed that the, uh, the power on his iPod was running low, so he needed to recharge. What do you do? There's a USB outlet. Hmm, let's recharge it. And then suddenly, the entire map database was written over with whatever content he had on his iPod. Okay. So I haven't been able to, uh, to corroborate that. I haven't found, uh, the, I forgot who originally told me this story, so I haven't been able to verify it. Uh, and so it may be completely bogus. But whenever I meet uh, people from the, uh, from the uh, maritime industry, I ask them, the shipping industry, uh, do you know who, where, where this was? Do you know this example? And they all deny it, of course, because that would be very embarrassing if it was uh, their uh, shipping line. Uh, but they also said, yeah, but something like this could happen. Okay. And that shows kind of like the, the level of awareness that the crew typically have in, in these situations. So when we look at the ship as a cyber target, uh, of course, we can try to mess with where it is, the, uh, the location of the ship. And so the way that people will typically try to, uh, to deal with this is to have uh, use more than one uh, satellite navigation system. Uh, so there are three uh, of the, the global, the GPS, the Galileo, and the, uh, the GLONASS system. Uh, and so having more than one would help you to, to verify 
uh, or at least make it more expensive for the attacker to try to attack you because he has to uh, mess with all three of them or, or to, uh, to uh, send out messages for all three of them, uh, not just for one of them. Uh, also, the, uh, the AIS system, uh, where you are, you can dislocate boys, you can tell uh, that the, the ship that it is in, in different locations from where I think it is, uh, and of course you need to then look at all the information that you have and have that to, uh, to corroborate. The second is the steering and the control of the ship, and this is where the pirates come in again, because this is of particular interest to them, or if you really want to incapacitate ships. So in a wartime uh, effort, this would also be, be relevant. Uh, and of course, some of this you can get in, if you can get in through uh, some of the external communication links, uh, the telemetric systems, for instance, you may be able to either uh, disable the motor uh, or the, uh, perhaps uh, just change the parameters for running the motor so that it would wear down much faster than uh, it would otherwise do. Then you have the ship safety systems. Uh, this is purely destruct, uh, destructive if you want to try to, to mess with these. Uh, basically trying to, uh, to decapacitate the ship, maybe sink the ship. Uh, so that's not of economic value to very many people. Uh, so perhaps this is not the first place we should look at. And then um, the uh, external communication system, because some of the examples that I gave you here today uh, very much was also on, on the communication to land and what was happening in, in that context. The Baltic... Um, oh, I always forget what this is. Baltic and International Maritime Corporation, or uh, consortium, uh, BIMCO, has produced a... Uh, these are leading a lot of the effort in trying to uh, securing ships, and they have done a risk assessment profile. Uh, you can go and download their uh, manual. Um, it's a very standard, but it's interesting in the way that, uh, as compared to uh, ISO 27000, it doesn't focus so much on the assets, but more on the threats. And this is kind of like something that has been a recurrent theme in the presentation here today, that uh, assets are so uh, important that we cannot just take a statistical attitude to it. You take out an insurance, uh, if it's something that is very expensive to you, it'll be very hard to replace, but if it's kind of like uh, life or death, then you try to, uh, to look at the threats and try to mitigate those as far as you can. So to sum up, ships are large complex cyber uh, systems, they're both IT and OT, and both of them have to work together in concert in order for this to work. IT vulnerabilities can have effects on the OT systems and, and uh, vice versa. They are legacy systems because they have a lifetime of 30, 40, 50 years. So uh, whatever they were born with uh, is something that will have to endure or will have to be replaced over time. And it will be replaced, which means that class, uh, class ships will change over time. Uh, there is a change of crew, which means the crews are not trained for the particular ships. They do not necessarily know the particular infrastructure very well, especially not the IT infrastructure, because that's not what they're educated for. And they have, um, often have a fairly poor awareness uh, about security and security issues, and there's a lot of examples of uh, ship crews being fished in, in different ways. They are really important because they are an integral part of our entire product uh, logistics chain, um, which also means that they have to be open to access from the outside. At least some of the systems have to be open, cargo systems and similar things. So it means that uh, security and cybersecurity is becoming an increasing uh, interest uh, of, of shipping companies. Um, there is not a lot of work going on. BIMCO has, for some years, uh, done some standards, and the latest one is from 2018, that's version 3. Uh, but also, the IT has put out a code of practice. The NIST uh, cybersecurity critical infrastructure, uh, critical infrastructure security framework is also applicable. And the uh, International Maritime Organization is also uh, trying to come up with guidelines. They have draft guidelines but uh, mostly they refer to BIMCO and also to some degree to uh, ISO 27000 for, uh, for uh, the work that needs to be done. So there are things out there, and if you are a ship owner, uh, then you need to, to consider these things and make sure that you try to follow these uh, pieces of advice that you find out there as much as possible. Thank you. <laughs>